How to fix knitting mistakes, 8 essential techniques. Hi everyone, my name is Norman, I run the blog nimbleneedles.com and I want you to become a better knitter and that's why today's video is all about fixing knitting mistakes. There are quite a couple of common knitting mistakes. You drop a stitch, you knit the wrong stitch, your tension is a bit weird, you added a stitch where none belongs and so on. But do you need to unravel everything now and start from scratch? Absolutely not. Nobody's perfect, we all make these little mistakes. That's nothing to worry about because in this video I'll show you all together 8 ways to correct the mistake in a totally invisible way. The video has two parts. First, I'll show you easy ways to fix mistakes while the project is still on your needles. How to change a stitch one row or several rows below. How to fix an additional stitch. How to change whole sections of your work. How to reverse knit. And of course, how to fix dropped stitches. And then we'll talk about how to cover up knitting mistakes once you've finished your work. Ladders, wrong stitches, gaps, all these sort of issues. That's probably the part advanced knitters will be more interested in. I'll add chapters to this video to make it easier to navigate for you. And at the end of this video, I'll also share a very important bonus message you do not want to miss. So let's head over to my desk and I'll show you how to fix knitting mistakes. But before, like this video right now to support my work, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button and definitely make sure to comment if you have a specific knitting problem or you know a way to fix mistakes I did not mention in this video. Part 1. Fixing knitting mistakes that are one or several rows down. Right at the start here is one very important tip. Check your work in progress frequently after each row. Take a second and check if there are any mistakes one row or maybe two rows below, like this one here. Mistakes are so much easier to fix when you notice them right away. And if you accidentally drop a stitch, secure it with a stitch marker, a spare needle or even a pencil right away so it cannot unravel any further. Number one, fixing a wrong stitch one row below. Probably one of the most common things that happens is that you mistakenly purled or knitted a stitch and you knit across your row and suddenly there's a purl stitch where none was supposed to be. And since it's so easy to fix, I want to start with this tip. So here's what you need to do. Insert your knitting needle into the stitch one row below and then pull out that stitch. Then slip that stitch back to the left needle. And as you can see, you have a strand here in the back. And then you can pull that strand through. And here is your fixed knit stitch. If it needs to be a purl stitch, it works the other way around. So insert, pull out the strand, slip back, and now you need to bring the strand to the front. Maybe you need to slip the stitch around one more time. So the strand here is in front. And then you can simply pull it through. And there is our purl stitch again. And naturally, this technique also works if you accidentally drop the stitch and it only unraveled one row. Again, pick up the stitch with your left needle. Then pull through the strand and slip that stitch back to the left needle. Make sure that you don't twist it as you do this and just like that you rescued your stitch. So what happens if it's a more complicated stitch? For example, you forgot to increase. Then knit a lifted increase into the row below. For example, a KLL knit left loop like this. Or you forgot to add a yarn over. Well, you can add it like this. Let's do it one more time. Just like this. And there is your yarn over and it will create an eyelet. But here's where I have to say stop. A lot of complicated stitches will require more or less yarn than a regular knit stitch. So uh, it will mess up your tension and possibly even pucker your fabric. So I wouldn't overdo it. 
Oh, and one more thing, if it's just a twisted stitch that is on your needles, you can simply knit it through the back loop to correct its orientation. If it's a twisted purl stitch, you purl it through the back loop. I already showed you this trick in my video on the best knitting tips and tricks. I'll link it to you up in here. Number two, learn how to think to fix a knitting mistake. If you read knit the other way around, it says think. And what you can always do when you spot a mistake a bit further down your knitting needle, you can reverse knit. Maybe you skip the decrease or whatever. In these cases, it's often the easiest to reverse knit a couple of stitches. Here's how. So here's how to do that. So insert your right needle into the previous stitch coming from the front and just remove the knitting yarn. Just like that. You will notice how your working yarn is getting longer and longer. So every couple of stitches, you will need to adjust your tension. But otherwise, this is quite the seamless process. And with a bit of practice, it will get really, really fast. And once you're at the offending stitch, unravel that as well. And then you can correct the mistake and continue knitting as normal. Um, also pay attention that you insert your needles the right way. So always coming from the front of the loop. So here's a knit two together um, and it works exactly the same, but you need to insert your knitting needle into the, both stitches at the same time and then you can unravel them. This method should also be your preferred method if you work with a super fussy yarn. I don't know, mohair, cashmere and these kind of yarns or a lace project. They too can be a nightmare to unravel. I mean, it might take a bit longer than frogging, but sometimes even thinking a couple of rows will yield the best results for these fussy yarn. Number three, fixing mistakes that are several rows below with a crochet hook. So what happens if you spot a mistake that is a couple of rows below? Well, you can intentionally unravel parts of your work and redo it with a crochet hook. Here's how. First, secure the stitch that is one row below the mistake with either a stitch marker or a spare needle. Also, this is what a lot of knitters often forget. Secure the stitches that are still on the needle. So slide them further down your needles or even use needle stoppers because what will often happen is that as you try to fix that stitch, more stitches drop and that's probably not what you want. And then drop the stitch and carefully unravel it all the way down to your stitch marker. See? And then you can redo that section with your crochet hook. So insert your crochet hook into that stitch Grab the yarn, the first strand here between the uh, adjacent stitches and pull it through, just pull it through. Then grab the next strand and the next strand all the way to the top. And then make sure that you don't slip the stitch twisted back to your left needle. And here we fixed that section. And if it's purl stitches you need to fix, then it's easier to fix them from the wrong side because for purl stitch, the yarn needs to be in front, but from the back, front is back. So in this case, you can use the exact same technique and don't need to bring the yarn to the front all the time. So fix it like this, slip it back to the needle. And as you can see, we fixed purl stitches. And if you need to fix garter stitch, then things are a tiny bit more complicated. I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on fixing garter stitch on my second channel. I link it to you up in here and in the description below. Go check it out because my second channel has tons of really short tutorials with slow motion recordings. And of course, you can also use this method in case you accidentally drop the stitch. Again, the first thing you absolutely need to do is securing the stitch with whatever is available. A spare needle, a stitch marker, a pencil, an earring, whatever. Just something so it cannot unravel any further. And then go hunting for, and then go hunting for your crochet hook and fix the mistake the way I showed you 
just a couple of seconds before. If it's purl stitches, then of course it's easier to fix it from the wrong side. Number four, fixing larger portions of your project. Sometimes there's not only one stitch, but several wrong stitches next to each other. Or what can also happen is that you accidentally add a decrease or an increase or even mess up a really complicated uh, repeat or cables. So how do you fix this knitting mistake? Well, you can also unravel more columns at the same time. Here's how. Before I proceed, a quick word of warning. This is an advanced technique and it needs to be executed very carefully and diligently. So if you are a beginner, then you might probably be better off unraveling. I'll show you how to do that the right way in a minute. Okay, the first thing you have to do is you need to secure the stitches below the mistake with a knitting needle like this. Pick them up. A uh, stitch marker probably won't get you very far. If it's just two stitches next to each other, you can unravel them the way I showed you before and fix one column after another with your crochet hook. And it really works well. But if it's more stitches, you have to do it like this. So once you secure the stitches, you can unravel all these columns. So drop all these stitches here, secure the stitches that are still on the needle and unravel things all the way down to your mistake. Okay, things look a hot mess now and quite scary, but here's how to fix it. So pick up another knitting needle in the same size or maybe even one size bigger and find the first strand here, this strand here and pick it up like you would your normal working yarn and knit across. Try to knit a bit looser than normal or use a bigger size needle and knit across. The last stitch is often a bit tricky. And just like that, you finished one row. You will notice that your tension is a bit messy. So you can sort of try to redistribute it evenly across all those stitches. And then turn around and find the next little strand here. So this one, pick it up and purl across. This is quite a bit fiddly. Curl across like this. Again, try to fix your tension and then turn your work around again and find the next strand and knit across. You can also use this technique to fix more complicated uh, repeats. Let's say you had a cable stitch here and you crossed it the wrong way. Well, you can adjust this as well. As you can see, you can also um, do a cable stitch. I'm doing it here without a cable needle. And then I can knit a tiny little uh, cable. The last two stitches are often quite fiddly. Okay. Well, it sort of works. Uh, it, you can also use the crochet hook for your last stitch. Again, uh, redistribute the yarn evenly with your knitting needle so you don't mess up your tension. Oops, let's go. And just like that, you added a cable. I have to be honest with you, this method will only yield okayish results. Your tension will be a bit different and you probably will have to do quite a lot of manual adjustments to make it look really, really neat. I'll show you how to do that a bit later in the video. 
Number five, learn how to shrug. If you want perfect results or you believe it's a bit too complicated to redo whole sections or if there are a lot of increases or decreases involved and there's just too much or too little yarn to redo things, then the only way to fix big mistakes several rows below is frogging. What sounds do frogs make? Ribbit, ribbit. And that sounds a bit like rip it out. And rumor has it that's why it's called frogging. It's just knitting lingo for unraveling multiple rows. Here's how to do that. Now you might wonder why I'm showing you how to unravel things anyway. Don't you just, you know, pull out the yarn? Absolutely not. Before you even remove your knitting needles, here's what you should do instead. If you are working with a yarn with easily identifiable stitches like this cotton yarn here, then I recommend doing it like this. Um, before you remove your knitting needles, um, pick up the stitches uh, with the other knitting needle. Just go into the uh, right leg of every stitch in the last row you want to save like this. Or you could also thread a spare length of yarn on a tapestry needle and do the same. This is often a bit easier. And secure the stitches in that row uh, before you unravel because this will prevent your stitches from accidentally unraveling further than you intend. And then pick up your ball, remove the knitting needle and start winding. So start winding and uh, start winding and unravel things one stitch at a time carefully, unravel a bit and then wind things. Because if you just pull things out like this, often you will end up with a hot tangled mess wind it back and go rather slowly because um, if you pull too tight, often you twisted your yarn in the knitting process and then what can happen is that you end up with knots or uh, sometimes um, here, especially at the end of the row, things often get stuck. So go slowly and unwind one row at a time so you don't get any tangles. And see here is the last row. I'm unraveling it. And now you can't really pull out the yarn anymore here. It's secured. This is my selvage here. Uh, it's secured. And then you can simply uh, pick up the stitches with your knitting needle tracing um, your lifeline. This is actually what it's called, your lifeline. And Make sure you don't split it. And once you picked up all stitches again, you can simply remove the yarn here, the extra yarn and start knitting. What you can also do in case you don't like to secure the stitches like I just showed you or just doesn't work with your yarn, you can carefully uh, unravel to one row and then pick up the stitches as you go. So like this, always unravel one stitch and pick up the stitches as you go. This is probably easier if you are working with a fussy yarn. And of course, here's the pro tip. If you are knitting with an interchangeable knitting needle set or special cables, then these will often have a lifeline hole. And you can insert a piece of contrasting yarn or better yet, I always use a bit of fishing line and you can insert it uh, through the hole here. And then you knit across your row as normal. Let me knit just a couple of stitches here. And as you can see, you, it pulls this lifeline through, but you don't knit it in. So you can remove it easily. And why do I use 
a fishing line instead of a contrasting yarn? Well, it's quite easy. First of all, it's so much easier to insert it uh, into the lifeline hole. Then it has zero friction, so it's much easier to remove later on. And it's a see-through, so it doesn't obstruct your view as you knit across the next row. And just repeat adding a lifeline every five or 10 rows. And you will always have this safe spot where you can unravel to without uh, any big problems. Part two, how to cover up knitting mistakes once you finished your work. All the previous techniques uh, work quite perfectly while your stitches are still on the needle. But sometimes you spot a mistake uh, once you bound off all stitches, possibly seam things together or wove in the tails. First, I want you to know that you can actually rip out a standard bind off quite easily. So you can rip it out and fix things. But if that isn't a possibility, then here are four more things you can try. Number six, adjust your tension manually. No matter if it's ladders or loose pearl stitches, or sometimes when you're knitting socks, you end up with a little gap here right at the gusset. And then you can fix things using your knitting needle. Here's how. So here we have a ladder. Imagine I was knitting in the round and you ended up with a ladder. And in these cases, you can simply adjust the tension by going into the adjacent stitches with your knitting needle and distributing the excess yarn towards the sides like this. This. You will also have to do the same on the other side. On the other side. And sometimes you need to carry the yarn a couple of stitches uh, to the side. And then if you continue doing this, the ladder will vanish. For the finishing touches, you can also go in from the front and pull out those little ribs between the knit stitches one at a time. And maybe go into the next column as well and do it like this. And there you go, your ladder vanished. And remember the hot mess we created here when I redid the cables, you can use the same technique and fix things. So often on the wrong side, it's a bit easier to see. See, you can see all these big pearl stitches and you can adjust them one at a time and distribute the yarn a bit more evenly across the rows. This will probably take a while, so I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, but it's worth it. So I spent the last five minutes trying to adjust the tension here. This is how it looks like now. I think it looks so much better than before. And if you ever wondered why some of my projects look so perfect, then this is the key. I use this technique to some extent on 90% of all of my projects. Number seven, lock your work. My little swatch here went through quite a lot in the past hour or so. I fixed things too often in a row and this is what it looks like. Um, and you see often it's not the big mistakes that make our project look a bit self-made. It's those tiny little irregularities in between and these often manage after blocking. Blocking means soaking your finished work in lukewarm water for about half an hour, maybe add some mild wool detergent, and then gently press it between two towels to remove the moisture, and then pin it to a soft surface to let it dry. Let's see what blocking does to our little swatch here. So you should do this in the sink, in your bathtub, or in a large bucket, whatever I'm doing it here um, on my work desk using the glass. So add a tiny bit of mild wool detergent uh, here, and then just throw it in and let it soak. Now this is cotton and with cotton you need to be careful, but if you're knitting with wool, then just let it soak for half an hour. 
it's half an hour later, so let's remove our little swatch here, wring out the excess moisture gently, gently, and then place it in between a towel and ring. That's how I always do it. I just press. I don't roll it or anything. I just press things and now things are fairly dry. You can use another towel or another portion of a towel if it's still a bit wet. And then you need to pin your project to a soft surface. This can be a special blocking mat, but you can also use, I don't know, your ironing board or a towel on your carpet. And try not to overstretch things, just stretch things out um, lightly and bring it into shape and then let it dry. So half a day later, this my swatch is almost dry. I'm a bit impatient now, but let's remove the pins and see how it looks like now. So this is how the swatch looks like now. The blocking removed the curling and I feel the overall stitch definition is much neater. Here in the middle, there are still some stitches that, that are a bit larger than the rest. So blocking really can't fix everything. Still always keep it in mind because it's such an easy way to neaten up your work. And if you follow me on Instagram, and I really hope you do, then rest assured that almost everything you will see there has been blocked one way or another. My projects don't magically spring off my needles and look perfect from the start either. But the good part is, it's not like Photoshop or so where reality and the picture doesn't match. Blocking is magic that really works. Number eight, cover up mistakes by grafting stitches or with embroidery. Now what happens if all the tips I showed you until now didn't work? Then you can graft stitches or use embroidery to hide things. Here's a purl stitch and it's quite visible and I want it to be gone. But imagine I bound off all stitches and this is, I don't know, I finished the sweater and I can't fix it the regular way. So what I can do is I can pick up a spare length of yarn in the same color and then what you can do is, so you come in from behind maybe one or two stitches uh, below or even uh, to the side. And then you carefully do uh, duplicate stitches across the offending, the offending curl stitch in this case. Go across and cover it up. And as you can see, it will not be totally invisible, but at least it will look a bit better. And if you know how to craft stitches, you can basically cover up any other section as well. But I mean, know that it will add a little bit of bulk to your knitting and it won't ever be totally invisible. So here's a pro tip. If there are bigger areas you need to fix, you won't be able to hide them. Instead, you can turn them into a design element and embroider them. So if you're interested, I really do recommend this amazing book by Britt Mary Christofferson embroidery on knitting because she really shows you so many fun ways to embroider and embellish your finished project and you can f use all almost all of these techniques to hide mistakes as well. It's beyond amazing. I'll put a link in the description below. And as promised at the end of this video, I want to share one very important bonus message with you. Always know, as long as you're just knitting for yourself, you get to decide what brings you joy and what does not. Not every mistake needs to be fixed. Computers and machines are quite awesome these days, but no matter if it's painting, pottery, crochet or knitting, handcrafted objects can have this amazing organic quality that tells a story of its creation and the background of the crafter. And mistakes, or let's call them irregularities, are a vital part of that. It's precisely these tiny little aberrations that you cannot replicate with a computer and that can make these items so fascinating. 
There are some mistakes of course that need to be fixed like a dropped stitch, but other mistakes might not change the functionality of your finished project at all. So before you unravel your whole project, I want you to ask yourself, does this mistake bother me? Not somebody else, you. Is it something that will prevent you from enjoying or wearing or using that object? And I specifically want you to trust your instincts here. I've seen a lot of people asking online if and how they can fix knitting mistakes. Well, you know the how now, but the if is something others won't be able to tell you. And I specifically want to mention that it's nothing you can tell others either. I can spot a wrong pearl stitch from two miles away and it will bother me and it will keep me from wearing that sweater. That's how my brain works. And if you tell me it's nothing to worry about, that you think it's perfect the way it is, you might have all the best intentions, but what you actually would be doing is trying to convince me of something I am not, persuading me to make a decision I will regret later on. There are people that just see all those fine details and others just focus on the big picture. And either way it's just fine. So what I'm saying here is trust your instincts. And of course be confident. Often we want to be perfect and that can be a good driving force behind becoming a better knitter. But don't let that ruin your knitting experience. Not only in knitting, but life in general. You need to embrace a certain level of mistakes. Take notes in your knitting journal and use those to elevate your next project. Because maybe your first scarf, your first socks, your first sweater is not perfect. But when you look at it, see all the new skills you mastered and don't just focus on the mistakes. You can't expect your first project to be perfect and flawless, but that doesn't mean it's worthless. Anyway, that's how to fix knitting mistakes. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment if you still have some questions or you just want to share some feedback and of course consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.